All right, I am with our guest this week, a guy who is living high right now for making the World Series of Poker main event final table on WSOP.com. Going to be entering third in chips, one Ryan Haggerty, known as Hags021 online. Uh, Ryan, thank you for taking the time to join us on Poker News. I've been covering you a lot in a lot of the New Jersey tournaments that we report on Poker News. And then, of course, we did the updates for the WSOP main event. And, and there you were. You made the final table. How does that feel? No, it's pretty sick. And uh, especially being the fact that, like, the day of the tournament, I uh, actually initially wasn't even planning on playing it because I didn't love the fact that if you get ninth and you get – if you get – if you get COVID, you get ninth place. And I was kind of like back and forth between whether I should play it or not. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm a poker player. Like, you know, this is what I do. Like, I got to be in this tournament. And like, that's just how it works, I guess, sometimes. <laughs> like, it's just like the way it didn't final table. Honestly, it just like, it took a while for it to really sink in that I was like, that I, that I made the final table. Like, and especially like in the, so the weird year, I play, played it online, two days online. Uh, it was a grind. It was a really good tournament. It was, it was, uh, much tougher field than like a normal main event being uh being online um it was a battle but no it feels it feels amazing well let's talk about the the covid situation because this is very unique a lot of people theorize what they would do if they were to make the final table uh you know whether or not they quarantine now because there's about two weeks between now and the actual final table so you know are you going to take any precautions are you going to you know do anything uh special to ensure that you don't get covid and you're also based in new jersey so do you have a, a plan in place of how you'll actually get to to nevada for this final table i mean uh throughout this whole like year i've been quarantining pretty hard and haven't really been gone out much so it's not really going to be too much different for me not really gonna be too much of a lifestyle change which is good for me i'm used to it um as far as going out I'm um, gonna planning on flying out the day before, and uh, just gonna quarantine up till then, and make sure you know I get tested before then, to you know get, like, make sure I'm on the right track to get to get in there. Uh, it's definitely like there's nothing like it's gonna be nerve. It's a little bit nerve wracking, like regardless. Like I mean, anybody who makes this final table is gonna like feel a little bit nervous about it. So, but uh, but you know, hopefully, just don't get COVID. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a certainly a unique. Uh, hybrid format the online portion is done I know that you you know play a lot online but you're also accomplished in the live realm you've won a WPT deep stack so you know are you feeling comfortable with your live game and then looking at this final table do you see any competition that you you might recognize or or think might be a challenge yeah I mean uh the last two years I've like done really well live and I and I and like I would say the beginning of my career playing live you know it took a little bit to kind of get my to get you know the hang of it the last two years, I've gotten real comfortable live, and I feel like once I once I get to that final table, I feel like you know, like it's been a while since I touched the cards and, and been on a live table. But I think like after you know, after a f after a couple of hands, I'll you know get right back into it, and I, I think I'll be fine. And you know, the final table definitely has some tough players. Actually, one of my best friends in in poker for the past like three years, Mike Cannon, he made the final table, so that's it's pretty awesome to be going to the final table with him. Uh, I know uh, Pesh De Silva is super accomplished poker player, like. The, probably like, big, like you know the biggest resume at the table and uh you know he's gonna be he's gonna be tough you know if he can he's got a shorter stack but you know if he can get so if he can you know chip up like he's definitely gonna be really tough the the chip leader he was playing i mean he was playing really good he's an aggressive player i was with him uh final two tables so you know he's got all the chips and you know it's always tough when someone with the chip lead you know is is aggressive and you know looking to like you know apply some pressure on people so he'll be tough to deal with uh, don't really know too much about the rest of the table, but I mean, it doesn't seem like it's going to be easy. It's going to be it's going to be a battle, but uh, you know, I'm excited to prepare and get ready for it. And uh, it's going to be like it's going to be an experience for sure. I had no idea that you and Michael Cannon were were friends. How, you said you go back a couple of years. Did you guys meet through the the poker world, or what's that friendship like? Yeah, so uh, yeah, we're really good friends. Uh, we met uh, like I think about. Oh, a little, a little over maybe two and a half years ago uh, through a, a mutual friend. I mean, I always kind of knew of him for like ever since I've been in poker and then we met through a mutual friend. And uh, when we would play the Borgata series, we would get, uh, uh, we would rent out uh, a beach house with Brigantine, you know, like, and when it's like not in the season, we got, you know, we get with this, we had this nice deal on this, on this house with Brigantine that we would rent out and, uh, and he was a part of it. And uh, we became really close friends, you know, always pull hard for each other. And, uh, we were both there. We were both there. And both had a lot of chips uh, most of the way through day two, and it was we were kind of like, like um, is this going to happen? Is this really going to happen? Like, we're really going to both make the final table, and 
man, it happened. I like couldn't believe it. So it's pretty, pretty amazing to be getting to like share that experience with someone that like I'm really close with. I think you making the final table is, uh, you know, obviously a great accomplishment, but I also think it's just a, a great step here in your poker evolution, if you will. You know, in preparation for this interview, I was doing some research online. There was a great article on Pocket Fives from back in uh, 2015 saying heads up with New Jersey poker player Ryan Haggerty, uh, Hags021. And it really talks a lot about how you learn the game, how you, you know, first got into poker. Um, you went to college, graduated with a degree in journalism, said that you want to do, you know, some sports writing, maybe even work your way into, you know, poker writing or poker, poker journalism, which, you know, I do a lot of, but now, you know, I'd swap, uh, I'd swap places with you any day, my friend, by the way, but uh, yeah, tell us to the listeners who might not know a little bit about you, about uh, you know, how you got into poker and what kind of, you know, steps you've taken between first learning poker and now here being at the World Series of Poker main event final table. Yeah, I guess my, my poker journey really uh, started when I was in high school, just playing with friends, and then it kind of it grew to taking a little more seriously in college, uh, started to like, eventually when I was in college, you know, online, online came about, so started playing it a little more seriously. Like I said, I was a journalism major. I actually, um, I actually covered a, a, a WP, WPT 15K when I was in college. Uh, I forget what site I covered it for, but it was the one that Asher won. And I was there covering it. I, I, inter I interviewed like uh, like Jason Mercier. I interviewed David Williams. I interviewed Greg Merson. Uh, I interviewed Ryan Reese. I was going to interview Asher actually because I remember he had like a misclick thing that happened. And I, I, I was in, at the tournament. I'm like, I was like, oh, Asher had that misclick. Uh, so maybe I'll interview, interview him. And I didn't really get around to it. And then like he just happened to when I'm like, damn, I didn't even interview him. Like that would have been pretty perfect. But uh, yeah, and then then from there I got and I there I just graduated. I graduated and then I ended up winning a tournament on Borgata for like twenty one thousand. That was like my big. That was like my big bank. And you know, I was a journalist. I like journalism, but I I definitely like it was like poker was my passion. And I just wanted to go for it, so I went for it. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's up and down roller coaster, but you know, like. And, you know, it wasn't always, it wasn't always amazing. And then, but the past, the past three years, I kind of, kind of honed my skills and really kind of saw like myself really starting to get like improve a lot and uh, the results started flowing in. So that's, that's basically, that's basically, that's basically my journey. Yeah. And so has it been, you've been a poker pro here for the last, you know, five years or whatever it has been, or have you, you know, had a quote unquote real job? What's a, you know, what's the grind like been? work life uh, all that jazz yeah no i i besides besides that like besides there was a, there was a point in my career where i where i was uh pretty broke so i was uh ubering but i never really had a, i never really had a real job so no i've been basically five years i've been a pro um and the last three years have been have been great so you know it's that that's you know it's, it's nice when you're when you're when you're doing playing well living comfortably as a pro and, and that's kind of how it's been and now it's you know it's all kind of come full circle to this you know you you mentioned you've been broke before a lot of poker pros have now here you are at the main event final table guaranteed just south of a hundred thousand dollars if you were finishing ninth but of course you're coming in third in chip so you have you know a good opportunity for some big money there's 1.5 million up top not to mention the opportunity to play for an additional 1 million and the bracelet against Damian Salas, who just won the GG poker portion of the WSOP main event. Uh, and then, you know, you have $529,000 in third. You know, there's big money at stake. And uh, I, I imagine that there's a lot of pressure associated with that because this really is life changing money. And we don't see that all too often in the poker world. Yeah, no, and, and, and it is. And, but I'm, um, you know, I'm going, I'm going to go into it and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm confident in my game and you know i'm just gonna i think i'm just gonna be able to have i think i'm gonna have a good i think my preparation is gonna be good i'm gonna be ready and it's kind of for me like you know whatever hap whatever happens happens you know as long as long as i play my a game like i'm not gonna sweat like you know how i'm not gonna i'm trying i'm not gonna try to think about how big the page i'm sorry i'm gonna try to go in there and like it you know just just play poker and just kind of approach it approach it like that and you know just play my game, really. It, it's the the pay jumps are big, and if you and if you think about it too much, it could really impact your decisions. And you really just want to go in there, and you really want to make the best decisions you possibly can. And uh, that's what I've been doing all tournament. You know, even on day two, I was like, 
you know, I'm not worried about, about busting this tournament. I can't be thinking about it. I can't be thinking about how big the moment is. I kind of just have to just play within myself, play my game, focus, and I'm just going to keep that approach when I get to the final table. Well, I'm excited. I will be out in Vegas. We're going to be doing live updates for poker news. So anybody that wants to keep track of you can do so during the main event. And in the meantime, you are also on Twitter at Hags underscore Ryan. I encourage everybody listening to, to give him a follow because, I mean, man, you're at the main event final table. You could be the next main event champion. But one thing I do know, yeah, one thing I know for sure is you're going to be around the poker world for a long, long time. All right. Yeah, thanks, for, uh, thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. 